just by way of self-justification, I try when I can to find where the Saints' Day Gospels are in the Gospel book. And I had actually found it and marked it, but do you think I could find where I had marked when I went back to look today? I could not. So, in any case, we heard the correct Gospel for the feast day of St. Augustine of Hippo, which is today. He is probably the greatest theologian of the church after St. Paul or since St. Paul. Uh, an interesting and often controversial figure in part because of the zeal that he felt and the way that he wrote about his experiences, uh, but someone who is worth knowing about in any case. He was born in North Africa to a Christian mother and a non-Christian father. He studied to be a lawyer, but in the end ended up teaching philosophy and rhetoric, which became very useful to him later in his life. Somehow in the course of his teaching, he found his way from North Africa to Italy, where after much cajoling from his mother, he was baptized and became a Christian. His mother, by the way, was St. Monica. She also is herself a major figure in Christian history. In any case, once he was baptized and had spent some time developing his Christian faith, he returned to North Africa, uh, to his native city, where, as was the custom of the time, he was chosen by the people, first as a priest and then as a bishop. It was once he became a bishop that he began writing, and it's his writings that are probably what we know the most of now and what are the most important to us. Uh, he wrote, his masterpiece is called The City of God, where he compares a human city, a worldly city, with the city of heaven. But the one that most Christians probably know and that has the most relevance, I think, to our lives on a daily basis is his, his autobiography, which he called Confessions. In it, he writes at one point, O oh Lord, you created us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. What a lovely way of expressing what the human life is like and what his life had been like as he had gone from one sort of philosophical system, one religious system to another, trying to find God. It's interesting that right down to this day, the Augustinians, who are named for St. Augustine, the religious order to which Martin Luther belonged among other people, still remember this expression and make a thing of it. I went to their website this morning looking for the reference for the quote I just gave you. And in fact, it's the main thing they have right up there at the top of their website. And they say, well, you might not think that religious people, religious, those living a, a, a religious life the way monks and nuns do, would want to think of themselves as restless. But we do. Because to be too settled and too sure of everything is probably to miss what it is God really desires for us. And it's perhaps to miss God entirely. I think there is some comfort for you and me in that because there is a restlessness in our hearts, I think. As we look at the world and we see its imperfections, even more, if we're truly honest with ourselves, if we look at ourselves and see our own imperfections, there is a restlessness because plainly this is not the perfection that we read in the Bible. This is not the perfection that we know in our hearts God desires for each one of us and for all of creation. And so perhaps to be just a little restless is a good thing as we search for what it is that God truly desires for each one of us. Not even so much what God desires to give each one of us, as important as that is, but perhaps the path God intends each one of us to walk, the work that God has laid on each one of us to do, to imagine that we have discovered everything that God desires from us or for us is clearly a mistake. And so today we give thanks for the life of St. Augustine and for his witness to that restlessness that draws our hearts nearer and nearer to the rest in God which is the reward of the faithful. Amen.